In this video, what we're gonna do is see how we can create lightning. Now this process involves a couple of steps, starting with capsules, then going into materials, and finally our Redshift camera to give it some bloom or glow. So let's go ahead and get started. So here is one of the things we're gonna try and create is we talk about lightning. So let's go ahead and switch to um, a simplified version of that scene. Essentially to start uh, in the process of creating lightning, you want to create a spline. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And I'll just go into a right view, front view probably also would have worked. And I'm gonna use my spline pen and just kind of place a point at the top and the bottom. And what's nice about this is uh, you don't have to add a lot of extra points um, like you typically might if you were trying to uh, create something like this um, that has a lot of definition and detail. So I'll place the spline kind of in the middle of those two things, just like we saw, I do have a cloner, so I'll turn it on just so it's a little bit easier to see. And one of the ways you can create lightning is with uh, this new capsule called the Electric Spline. Now I'm pretty sure this is from Rocket Lasso and um, all you have to do with this capsule is make it a child of whatever you want um, to turn into uh, lightning or in this case, an electric spline. And you can see a lot of the work is pretty much already done for us. Um, I can take this spline and actually make it a child of my null here to do it on all of these. Now, the problem with this current setup is that each kind of piece of lightning is the same though. I can go over how to fix that, but if you hit play, you know, we already have some lightning going on here, something very similar, an electric spline, if you will. Now, if you select it, you'll see a bunch of different options available to us. The step is kind of the amount of detail you want. So lower values will give you more detail. Larger values will give you less. Uh, so depending on the size and, and scale you're working with in your scene, that might be something you want to adjust along with the displacement. So that's really how much this can move. Now, you know, I mentioned there are other ways to do this. You could do something very similar by adding a displacer um, deformer to a spline. So this isn't entirely new or different than, than that technique, um, but a lot of the options are right here. And there are even some different ones that uh, are a little bit easier to work with in the electric spline modifier versus if you were to do it just with a deformer. Um, you do have different um, seed values to mix things up. And so if I was to kind of duplicate this setup out, that would be how I could make the lightning look a little bit different, would be to um, give each one of these a different seed value. And you can see how that's kind of changing things up. Um, well, let's just kind of go back. Uh, we do have different noise patterns you can work with. So uh, that way, um, if you want to experiment with different options to get you know maybe a little bit more stylized noise, or lightning, you can do something like that. Um, I do think the default works pretty well, but some of these others aren't too bad either. Uh, now I did skip this, but you can also change the scale um, per axis as well. So, you know, for instance, if I don't want a lot of movement on the Y, instead just the um, X and Z, then I could do that by turning the scale down here. Um, so a bunch of noise properties that you've seen if you've used the noise texture or, um, you know, the shading to form or really anywhere you can put a noise pattern in Cinema 4D. So frequency, octaves. Um, one of the nice ones though that I always like to point out is loop um, period. So if you want this to loop, you can specify exactly how many frames you want it um, to have before it loops. And that can be very useful as well. Um, now, some of these options like modify, I don't really think, you know, are as necessary. You can kind of see what this is doing, kind of pivoting um, from that, allowing us to kind of move that pattern a little bit higher or lower, smoothing it out, obviously, if you want a little bit less detail. Um, one thing I do like is the clone count. And if I um, simplify this just a little bit, you'll see now we have multiple strands for each one of these. And that can be very cool as a way to add extra detail all in one. Now, one of the things I had I haven't tried, but would be interesting to try would be to apply um, a different material or different color to each of these different strands, which should be possible, um, but not something um, I've uh, tried yet. What's also really nice about this is if you look at the beginning and the end, you'll notice it's not moving, which is great if you want to kind of pin this to a part of um, some geometry and not have it kind of intersect or go past where you want. However, if you turn this down, um, you're able to 
get a little bit more movement at the tops and bottoms. So depending how much movement you want, depending on how you have this set up, this can be helpful. You can blend between that as well, um, and then blend the start and end. And you can see how that's kind of simplifying that. So all of that is really useful in, in um, nice to have for creating interesting looking lightning or electric splines. Now, the second part of this is once you have the geometry, or in this case, the splines, how to render it. And what we need to do to start um, is make sure we're using Redshift. Now, um, as I am using 2024, that is the default renderer now, which is great. If it isn't, make sure your render is set to Redshift here. Um, and to create geometry from this, what we're going to do is right click on our spline, go to the render tags and choose Redshift object. And that will allow us to create geometry um, from our splines here. And you can do that in a variety of different ways. You can treat these splines as hair strands, um, or you can clone out different pieces of geometry along the splines. Hair strands is gonna be what I'm going to use for this. Um, you can also work with the thickness, uh, which, I don't, let's see, we can kind of go into this a little bit. So if I go ahead and turn this on, we'll lose that. Um, let's also apply a material here, just so we can see something a little bit better. Right, so there's ours. There we go. So you can see as I go into this, you can control the thickness if you want thicker or thinner, um, lightning or electric spline, whatever you want to call it. And you can even control this over the length of the spline, starting, you know, at the beginning, have it very small, the end be large. You know, maybe in this case, we'd want to do something like have the, the middle be a little bit thicker. So you could do something like uh, that. So lots of different options to work with the, the thickness and whatnot. Maybe we make it a little bit thicker there. Turn this down just a little bit. Perfect. So that's looking pretty good. Um, for our geometry, uh, you can also adjust the interpolation if necessary. I don't think that's important for this. And now to turn this actually into lightning, we need to adjust the material property. So I can just choose a color here. I'll go with red like from the example. We also need to to use uh, emission. So I'm gonna use the same color here in emission and then make sure I add some weight. And that's gonna get rid of any shading here. And I may wanna go a little bit higher with this. And so at this point, um, it is emitting light and it is glowing. Now it's because I have um, a camera here. All right, so actually we don't need that dome light. I already have one in here. There we go. Um, and so we're you're getting kind of to see the end result with how to get there. Uh, so if you were to, let me just delete that camera again and frame this up, something similar to what I had previously so that we can start from scratch. I don't think we need to do that. Make sure we're looking through this. Yeah, rotate it. There we go. And something like this looks pretty good add a protection tag so I don't accidentally move it. Um, the trick here is to add some bloom in our Redshift camera, because if you look at this as is, um, we've lost a lot of that color, um, though you are seeing a decent amount of it in the reflection. So uh, that is something that is very common, and I think the emission weight of 100 is way too high, so I'll turn that down to say 20. That'll start to bring back some of the color, um, but to get the glow, it involves using the Redshift camera. So I'm gonna come here into lens effects and I need to toggle bloom um, from render settings to override. Though if you wanna adjust it in your render settings, you absolutely can. And then from here, I can turn that threshold down and we'll start to see some of that glow like we had before. Now, how much glow is dependent on the weight of the emission, okay, as well as um, the intensity and threshold here, because technically this can go above 100%. But what you have to think about in balance with is the other brightness values or um, emission values in your scene. Uh, because in order to make only certain things glow, you wanna make sure you this threshold is pretty high. Um, so that way if it's you have a, you know, a phone screen on or something like that, it is the only thing, it doesn't glow along with our lightning. So you know I would bump this up even higher and now you're starting to see the glow. And that's a bit too in, too much. But what's nice is I don't have to always adjust 
or fix it in the weight, I can then use my threshold here to do that. And this will allow me, as I mentioned, to control exactly um, what I want um, to have this bloom. Now, what would be nice is if you could, you know, control it per material, per object ID, something like that. And that's why, you know, it's nice to add glow in After Effects uh, or, a, you know, whatever compositing program you're in. But if you just want to do it in Cinema 4D and Redshift, you can do that as well. And by using a higher emission value and a um, higher threshold, uh, you can then control what is receiving this bloom. So that's kind of the first part of this. If you want to do um, lightning like this, where uh, both the top and bottom, you know, don't move, right? They're, they're static. They're kind of locked. Um, the second part of this, and I'll just go into a new file. So for the next part of this, if you wanted to create something that was more like a, a streak of lightning or uh, the name is escaping me, but you know, something like you might see in a storm, um, I'm going to come into a new file here and start with my spline pen. And I'm just going to try and create a shape uh, that lightning might have. Keeping in mind, as I mentioned earlier, that we don't need to add a whole lot of points to this. I should also mention I do have snap turned on, which will be useful here in a second. And I'm just going to create a little bit of lightning. And I'm using my spline pen, I'm hitting spacebar to toggle it on and off to create some of the branching that I will want. Make sure I deselect. And yeah, maybe just, oops, one or two more little ones. Oh, keep forgetting to deselect. And there we go. Now I'm gonna snap all this together, which is why I have my snap tool turned on just to kind of make this look like a single piece of lightning. And I do find things tend to stick a little bit better together if you snap on their points as opposed to just trying to line it up, though, you know, we'll do one just to see how that kind of works out. All right, so maybe that goes there. And this one goes right there. And it doesn't look like much yet. But once again, once we add um, our electric spline deformer, that's gonna do a lot for us. Now, if when you were using the spline tool, um, you end up with multiple splines, what you could do is select all of them, right click and choose connect objects plus delete. But a single spline does work best. So electric spline is what we want. And I'll make that a child again. And yeah, there we go. And we're seeing a few of these pieces kind of break apart, which could be problematic if you were kind of going to do the static type thing we had before. Now you can uh, make things a little bit better by adjusting the start and end here a little bit. You know, you can see now that, yeah, they separate a little bit, um, but they're, they're also staying pretty close together. Now the trick from this is to get only part of this to show up at any time. And we're gonna use another capsule called the trim spline in order to do this. So I will put that underneath. Now what this allows you to do is kind of grow out our spline, although I'm not really seeing it here. Ah, I see why, because it's a child of it instead of a peer. So we'll do that first, put the trim spline first. I don't think you need to make it first. I just think um, you don't want it to be a child of the electric spline, which is what I was doing. And kind of set that back. And it's very similar to like a sweep where you can, you know, grow it out, right? Now, what's happening as it grows out, it's growing out per segment. So each little piece I made is growing out individually. If we uncheck per segment, right, you can see now how it's going through one piece, then another, then another. And the order is a little bit backwards and not what I want, depending on, you know, how I drew out that spline. So we, Definitely want to take that into consideration. And if you want to fix that, you can select the spline and come in here, select a point, you know, and uh, decide whether you want to choose make first or whatnot. But that's off the screen. I can show you up top here, even though I don't really want to do this one. Um, if you go to point order, um, you can choose whether you want it to set it the first point or reverse the sequence to help get the segments moving the way you would like. Turn this back on. And now in our trim um, spline, you can see we're able to kind of grow it out. But if you wanted it to kind of cycle through this, that's where the offset and rate come into play. 
So I can turn down the start, maybe the end a little bit. So we have just that section. You can see the offset, if I was to animate that, would allow us to kind of have it go through and show only a small section. And if you wanted to do that, you don't necessarily have to keyframe the offset. Um, you can just add a rate. And so now if I turn this up, you can see I'm able to get this kind of going through here. Now, having the off offset is up there a little bit as well, um, tends to give me something I like a little bit more, but uh, really it comes down to the rate as it's now kind of just growing and going through here. Now, you can see if I go back and adjust the start and end, um, it's taking that away. So you do need to trim it down a little bit there in order to do that. Could try turning on per segment. That would give us a little bit more because now it's animating each segment on its own, which I do think for this particular situation works quite a bit better. And of course you could invert it um, if it was kind of giving you the opposite of what you would like. And then when done, it's the same process when it comes to um, you know the material as well as the camera to give you that lightning effect. So that will do it for this one. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, if you could like it and subscribe to my channel, I would also appreciate it. Until next time, take care.